Hi everyone! Thanks for tuning in for another service special with Kira and Hillary. This week, our fellow Girl Scout and STEM programs manager, Kaylee, is going to teach us about vermi composting. If you're not familiar with composting, don't stress. Kaylee will teach you everything you need to know. But to give you a little introduction, composting is the process of turning fruits, vegetables, and other natural materials into healthy soil for your plants to feed on and grow in. Vermi composting is the use of earthworms in this process. So it's gonna be super cool and super fun to learn about. Hi Girl Scouts, my name is Kaylee Bucor and I'm the STEM Program Manager at the STEM Center of Excellence. Today I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to make your very own vermicomposting bin at home. But before we jump into our step-by-step -step guide, I think it's important for us to discuss what vermicomposting is and why it's important. How many of you have heard the term composting before? Take a moment, press pause on the video, and discuss with an adult or someone else in your home on what you think composting is. We know that compost is decomposed organic matter. Composting is the natural process of recycling that organic matter, such as leaves and vegetable scraps, into a rich soil that gardeners fondly call black gold. Vermi means worm. So vermicomposting is worms that are helping along that natural process of recycling that organic matter to produce worm castings. And we're gonna talk more about what worm castings are and why we like them so much. It's important to note that for this video, worm castings and that rich soil that gardeners refer to as black gold are one and the same. The process of vermicomposting is quite simple. So organic matter will die, it will fall to the ground, and it will begin to decay. And then the FBI goes to work. I don't mean the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The FBI I'm referring to is fungus, bacteria, and invertebrates, our main decomposers. Which part of the FBI do you think worms are a part of? Are they a fungus, a bacteria, or an invertebrate? Pause the video and discuss with someone in your home about what you think worms are. If you guessed invertebrate, you're right. Worms are in fact invertebrates because they lack a what? A vertebrae? Absolutely. Worms don't have a backbone. So why worms? Worms, like all other creatures, create waste. Worm poop is called castings, and castings have five to 11 times more nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium than the surrounding soil. Worm castings are not only a soil replenisher and a natural fertilizer, but in many ways act as a natural pesticide that helps the plant build up an immune system. As material passes through a worm's intestinal tract, intestinal secretions within the worm make nutrients more concentrated and available for plant uptake. Worm castings contain a host of microorganisms and concentrated nutrients. We know that the darker the organic matter is, like soil, the more nutrient dense it is. Additionally, castings have high water retention, which aids plants growth and reduces desertification and erosion. 
What I have in my hand here is 100% worm poop, AKA worm castings. Landfills can take up to years to reclaim waste. Whereas these worms, these guys right here, they can reclaim it in a matter of months, sometimes even a matter of days. Just another reason why I love vermicomposting. It reduces waste in our landfill and creates organic material that I can use in my garden. Before we get into our step-by-step -step guide, let's review our materials list. You're gonna need a bin of some sort and a lid. You're gonna need a power drill and a drill bit, scissors, newspaper, a pan of some sort, vegetable scraps, worm castings or a soil starter, and don't forget, worms. I get my red wrigglers from the Texas Worm Ranch here in Garland. You can order yours from Amazon or reach out to Heather at the Texas Worm Ranch and buy your own worms. All right, so now that we know the importance of vermicomposting and why it's good for the environment, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your own worm bin at home. Now, I salvaged this, um, it was on the side of the street and someone was getting rid of it, so I wanted to repurpose it. It is in fact a worm-friendly habitat, but I'm gonna do some modifications to it uh, to suit our needs today for vermicomposting. So you're gonna want a bin um, at least 10, possibly 18 gallons, um, and you're gonna need the help of an adult and a power drill. Um, for our adults, you're gonna need anywhere from 1 8 to 1 4 of a drill bit. Um, I chose to use 3 16 today, but it's really up to y'all. So what you're gonna do is, once your drill is loaded, you are going to start creating a series of holes to provide ventilation to your worms. We're ready. You don't need too many holes. Just enough. Okay, so you're gonna go around the whole bin with a couple of holes, and then you're also going to do some at the bottom. So I will do those with you now. This is gonna prevent the additional water uh, to leak out. So you don't, it's not sitting in the bottom and you create this anaerobic liquid that's gonna kill everything. Oops. See, relatively simple. When vermicomposting, it's important to consider your nitrogen and carbon ratios. So carbon is your energy and nitrogen is your protein. So sources of carbon include leaves, newspaper, cardboard, and corn cobs. Everything else is mostly considered nitrogen. So your vegetable scraps, your potato peels, your dried herbs, um, ends of onions, ends of carrots, those are all really great nitrogen sources. Once your newspaper is cut up, go ahead and put it in the bottom of your worm bin. This is gonna help soak up any additional liquid. So we've completed step one, which is preparing our bin with our ventilation holes. We've also completed step two, which is shredding our newspaper and adding it to the base of our bin. Step three is to add in either a handful of soil or worm castings that you can also buy from the Texas Worm Ranch. So that's what I have here is castings and we are going to place them in the bin. Okay. You are basically having a starter soil for your worms to live in. Okay, so you're going to spread it out a little bit at the bottom. Spread it out. And as you can see, um, I have worms in the, the soil already. Uh, so I want to provide a really good habitat for them. Um, 
So that includes the base of the newspaper, right? And then spreading out a good amount of worm castings for them to burrow in. Now for your worm bin, you're definitely gonna need some worms, right? But don't go outside and dig up the earthworms from your garden. Those aren't the types of worms that we want. Deep burrowing earthworms are found one to three feet below the surface. Our red wrigglers, which we see here, are surface dwelling worms, and those are the worms that do the real work of the decomposing. Check the link in the description for the Texas Worm Ranch where I get all of my native Texas red wrigglers. All right, so now that we've added some of the worm castings and soil into the base of our bin, we have to add some food, okay? So what I do with my vegetable scraps is after I cut them, like these carrots, I put them in the freezer. I put them in the freezer to avoid other organisms like fruit flies from developing on here. We don't want fruit flies in our bin, that's not good. Okay, so I have frozen these carrots and what I'm gonna do is I've already cut them into smaller pieces. You can cut them smaller if you'd like. And I'm gonna put them in the bin and I'm going to bury them. It's important that you bury your vegetable scraps so that they're not just out on top, accessible to other organisms. Okay, so come on over. And I'm just gonna pick one side of our bin, okay? And I'm just gonna put a little bit of food right in here. You don't need too much because you don't wanna overfeed them, okay? And they can survive a surprisingly long time on minimal food, okay? So that's all I'm gonna put and then I'm gonna bury it, okay? So now that I've cut more newspaper, uh, I'm gonna need a way to soak it, but I don't wanna oversaturate it because then that will leave a lot of moisture in our bin. So I'm gonna take these pieces of paper, of newspaper, I'm gonna put them in a tray, okay? And I'm just gonna come over and I'm just gonna fill the tray with a little bit. I'm gonna mix it around so it gets mostly saturated, okay? We don't want it totally soaked, but we want a little bit of moisture, okay? I'm gonna give it a little bit of a squeeze. Okay, dump this water. Okay, I'm gonna come back over to my worm bin. And now that I have my food scraps, my worms, my soil, I need to add some sort of layer on top. You want to maintain a 20 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. So you never wanna overstuff or overfeed your worms and always make sure that they have plenty of carbon. I've made sure that they have two layers of newspaper, the one on the base and then the one on the top. And the one on the top extends about four inches. All right, so we're gonna talk about a few common mistakes that you can run into while building your own vermicomposting bin at home. First thing is first, if you don't have enough carbon, right? We've talked about your sources of carbon, but if you just put these couple of pieces in here and then you're like, well, all right, all done, good to go. That's one of your first mistakes. Make sure that you have plenty of carbon. Your second mistake is adding too much food. You're not gonna put all of your vegetable scraps in here, right? You're gonna want a couple of pieces Right, enough. And remember what I said in an earlier video? You're not just gonna set them on top and walk away, okay? What you need to do to avoid another mistake is to bury them, right? Very good, so that will help remove any other um, organisms that you don't want. Another mistake uh, when dealing with food is not freezing your vegetable scraps before you put them in. If you just put them in, uh, there's a better chance that they will have fruit fly eggs or larva on them. So you wanna make sure that you freeze your food before you put it in, okay? Another mistake is putting in the wrong types of food. So you wanna make sure that you don't put any citrus or anything in there that's really acidic. Uh, these are gonna sit in the worm bin and they're just gonna fester and they're gonna to start to rot. The worms don't wanna eat them, okay? Now, if you are maintaining your carbon to nitrogen ratios, you should be doing good. Don't go in and start pouring in water. That's another mistake. All of these vegetable scraps um, have enough water content for your worms to survive. You should never be dripping water, okay? 
So I know we talked about when we were drilling the holes, uh, it was partly for drainage, okay? So one way that we can combat that is using your pan, you can set it on top, okay? And you would put one over here and you can catch all of the water. Okay, so now we are out here in my garden. I have a bunch of worm castings that I need to now put into my uh, vegetable and fruits. So we have a yellow squash here. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of worm castings, right? And I'm gonna sprinkle it around the base, okay? And you don't need a whole lot, because remember I talked about they have a high concentration of nutrients that's gonna allow the plant to uptake it. With all of the rain that we've been having, this is a really great time to put it in. It's like a, it's like a power punch of nutrients. It's like a delicious drink for them, okay? And now I'm gonna come over into my blackberry bush and I'm going to add some as well, okay, right around the base. And we're gonna get a little bit back here. Okay. You don't need a whole, whole lot, all right? And for the last plant is we're gonna add some to this tomato, okay? So we're gonna grab a decent chunk. We're just gonna put it all around here, all around. Push it in a little bit. There we go. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we learned about vermicomposting. I'm so excited to share this passion and my garden with y'all. If you have any questions, please reach out. Some other good resources, like I said, is the Texas Worm Ranch in Garland, um, and there are so many resources online. I hope you had fun doing the service learning project, and I'll see you next time.